we have to define the load patterns dead okay similarly if any live load and and we'll be considering earth pressure that is soil pressure zero water pressure that is hydrostatic pressure earthquake x so as we are considering a 2d analysis so we'll consider the earthquake effect in only one direction that is either in eqx or eqy and it should be quick and we'll do it with the user coefficient modify load patterns and similarly as it is an underground structure that is there may be a chance of high groundwater table which will lead to uplift so let me add that as well it will be a date type okay modify load pattern zero now let me define the earthquake load pattern so global x direction okay so base shear coefficient we know the basic formula to calculate it that is a h is equal to z i s a by 2 r g where z is the seismic zone factor i is the importance factor r is the response reduction factor and s a by g is the acceleration coefficient and for nepal we will consider seismic zone as 5 that is v and for which the zone factor z is equal to 0 0.36 as it is an important structure so we will consider 1.5 and the response reduction factor will be different not 3 let me show you that so in is code you can see the response reduction factor in table 9 and that is response reduction factor r for building system so previously we used 5 that is a moment frame system with rc building with special moment resisting frame that is uh, ductile building and for now we have structural wall system and so we have to consider this value and we have two different values that is building with ordinary rc structural wall and building with ductile rcc structural wall and in the note it has been said that rc and steel structure in seismic zone 3 and 4 5 shall be designed to be ductile in the system is not allowed to be in this system that is buildings with ordinary rc structural wall cannot be used so we have to go for building with ductile RC structural wall that is 4 so Z is 0 0.36 into importance factor 1.5 and divided by 2 divided by R which is 4 now we have to find the value of SA by Z and that depends upon the time period so you can find that in the code with reference to graph here so we'll be considering type 2 soil that is medium soil and natural time period we'll get the value of sa by z so for structures like this the time period is always less than one that lies between 0 to 1 second so the value of sa by z will be 2.5 i'll show you that later on we can easily calculate the time period and that will come less than 0 0.1 not 1 0 0.1 second so for that the value will be 2.5 so it comes as 0 0.16875 similarly building height exponent k so the building height exponent k is basically an exponent related to the structural period and for a structure having time period less than 0 0.5 you can take k as 1 for a structure having time period greater than 2.5 it will be taken as 2 and if the time period lies between 0 0.5 and 2.5 the value can be interpolated between 1 and 2 so for now we can just go for 1 and basically it is used for calculating the lateral seismic force here you can see the value k so it will be a square if you are using 2 so 1 okay so this much load is sufficient to understand the 2d analysis now let us draw the structure okay now the next step is to apply the loads assign so firstly let us assign for the wall and go to frame loads distributed because either it is water pressure or earth pressure it is distributed however it is uniformly varying so load pattern Firstly, we will go earth pressure and 
the load direction so it is applied in this direction so look x is x that is x axis similarly load type it is force and it is a trapezoidal load and relative distance or absolute distance from end i so end i basically means the point of start so basically we are going to apply a triangular load the base will have the maximum magnitude of the force and the absolute distance is zero at this point absolute distance from end i zero and considering the height of the structure as 5 meter and providing a free board of 0 0.5 meter at top so the height of backfill will be 4.5 so the load at base the load will be ka into height considering active or pressure the coefficient will be 0 0.33 into unit weight of the material we are assuming that the water table lies at the top so the unit weight of the soil considering saturation condition is 19 height of the backfill 4.5 so 28.215 at base apply similarly in this direction it will be negative considering equal backfill on either side apply okay now water pressure global x and let us give a free board of 0 0.5 meter for the water as well so the height of water is 4.5 and there won't be any coefficient we'll just multiply it with the height of water and the specific weight of the material that is water so 9.81 into 4.5 44.15 so now let me apply this so this it will be a positive value so 44.15 and similarly it will be negative and considering the slab that is vertical load so we can simply go for uniform load with positive value that is considering the gravity apply uplift so basically uplift is or the uplift force arises due to the restriction provided by the base slab for the movement of water in the vertical direction so considering the backfill up to this point that is 4.5 meter the groundwater table should be allowed to come up to this depth that is up to this head but due to the slab it is being restricted now it will apply certain force and that is basically uplift and that goes up to the level of water available that is ground water table but for now we are considering the water table to be up to the point of backfill so we can simply go for uniform load gravity but it will be negative 9.81 into head available 4.5 so 44.145 it is okay so we have applied earth pressure or uh, uplift pressure, earth pressure, water pressure. So if there is any live load, you can go for it. So let us assume the live load to be as 2 kN per meter gravity. Okay. 